Senator Cormann. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Uh, Mr. Acting Deputy President, today we are debating the second significant attack by the Rudd government on our health system. It is an attack on our health system that will hurt, of course, millions of Australians that are privately insured, but it will also hurt uh, those Australians who will have to compete with more people uh, seeking access to our already overburdened public hospital system. It is another broken promise of the Rudd government. And despite the most emphatic pre-election commitments, despite the most solemn pledge by the Prime Minister and by the uh, Minister for Health and Ageing, Nicola Roxon, uh, herself, before the last election, we are now here debating a proposal uh, to reduce or scrap altogether private health insurance rebates. It is the government's second strike in two budgets against the important private health component of our mixed uh, public and private health system. And I am quite concerned, as I'm sure 11 million privately insured Australians are quite concerned about what it is that we will uh, be debating this time next year if uh, the Rudd Labor government indeed is uh, courageous enough uh, to take us uh, to a third uh, Rudd government budget. Now, before the last election, we were promised the world on health. Labor was going to fix public hospitals, and if we hadn't made enough progress by the middle of 2009, uh, a proposal would go to the Australian people that the Commonwealth would take over the running of public hospitals. We were promised the world. The buck was going to stop with the Prime Minister. All we've had is a bad old-fashioned Labor crusade against privately insured Australians, against Australians who do the right thing by our health system by putting additional resources, private resources into it. All we've had is a bad old-fashioned crusade against private health. All we've had is a review, a 20-month review into public hospitals, a, a review which is now, uh, you know, there's going to be a review now into the review, and then we've had a tax. And then we've had a tax. That's all we've had. Th this government has been a failure in health, I've said it before. This minister has been a failure as health minister. There's been no uh, progress made in terms of the running of our public hospitals since this government has been elected. In fact, the situation is now worse. And measures like this, rather than put less pressure on public hospitals, will put more pressure on public hospitals. And I think uh, that everybody well understands that. Now, the overarching health policy objective ought to be that we can ensure as policymakers that all Australians can have timely and affordable access to quality hospital care. Now, the best way to achieve that is through a well-balanced, mixed health system. It's a, it's a well-balanced health system with a strong and well-funded public system and a strong and well-supported private system. Now, those on the other side well know that after the 13 years of Labor when they last were in government, our health system was seriously out of balance. A private health insurance membership was plummeting and uh, there were significant uh, waiting times, significant pressure on public hospitals. Private hospitals were underutilised. There were serious, serious issues uh, in our health system when we came into government in 1996. And of course, health insurance membership continued to plummet for a further two years, for a further two years after we got into government because of the flow-on consequences of bad policy on health throughout uh, 13 years of labour. And, and it took us two years before we were able to turn things around through very sensible health policy measures like uh, the 30% uh, private health insurance rebate, like the Medicare levy surcharge measure, uh, like uh, lifetime health cover. And of course, uh, since the uh, private health insurance membership bottomed out at 5.7 million in December 1998, it has increased uh, by uh, staggering. Uh, 4 million Australians who are now putting additional resources into our health system to take it up to 9.7 uh, million Australians. Now, we've had some discussion uh, you know, over the last uh, little while. Well, actually, today, we've had some discussion today about what's happening with private health insurance membership now. I mean, we, we've, got, we've got, of course, uh, here a government that is very good at the spin, very, very good at the spin, but not so good at the substance. We've got a, we've got a Minister for Health and ageing that is very good at being a propaganda minister for Treasury, but it's not quite as good at uh, assessing the flow on consequences of, of her actions and of the actions of her government. So let's just have a look beyond the headlines and assess what is actually happening in terms of private health insurance uh, membership across Australia today. Well, the first point to make is 
that irrespective of uh, the figures that are being quoted today and that the minister is sort of waving around, the growth in private health insurance membership has already slowed down, has already slowed down. If you look at the membership trends in the last few years of the Howard government, we had increases of uh, 400,000 uh, additional uh, privately insured Australians in, in the lead up to uh, June 2008, for example. This year it's gone down to 200,000, but furthermore, population has actually increased over that same period. And if you look at the real target, if you look at the really meaningful target, that is the proportion of privately insured as a proportion of the population, it started to stagnate under this government. It has already started to stagnate. And of course, we know that the government, the Rudd government, expects private health insurance membership to go down over the first term of its government. If you look at the budget papers, they've got a figure there now, 9.7 million Australians will be privately insured throughout uh, the term of this government. But of course, uh, in the context of uh, increases, population increases, that means that the Rudd government themselves expect uh, the proportion of uh, the population with private health insurance to go down, uh, something that they've hidden in the fine print of the budget papers uh, by removing uh, the reference that has been there for many, many years uh, to the percentage rather than uh, just the absolute uh, number of Australians with private health insurance. But look, this is, this is uh, bad public policy because it will put more pressure on public hospitals. It will result in an immediate increase in the cost of uh, private health insurance for those uh, in those uh, income uh, brackets that are being targeted by the government. And it will result in fewer people with private health insurance. Now, there's no argument between the opposition and the government that that will be the outcome. The government agrees that this will lead to more pressure on public hospitals. The government agrees that this will result in an immediate increase in the cost of uh, private health insurance. And the government agrees that it will result in fewer uh, people with uh, private health insurance. The argument between the government and the opposition, and indeed between the government and stakeholders, is about how much more pressure, how much additional cost, and uh, how many uh, people will end up leaving private health insurance. Now, just talking uh, very quickly about, again, the number of people expected to leave uh, private health insurance, because this is the second strike against private health under this government. And last year, we had the medical levy surcharge change, which the government said, the government said, would result in 492,000 fewer Australians in private health insurance. And I put it to you that Treasury got it right. 492,000 fewer Australians with private health insurance. That doesn't mean a drop of 492,000 uh, compared to the uh, number of privately insured at that time. It means that 492,000 fewer Australians with private health insurance as would otherwise have been the case. And when we were investigating, inquiring into this measure during Senate estimates and the inquiry, both the Health Department and uh, Treasury both confirmed that they stand by those figures. The government's budget is based on half a million, nearly half a million fewer Australians to be in private health than otherwise would be the case. And that is, of course, uh, very relevant when we assess uh, the flow-on implications. Because the reality is, the more people take out private health insurance over the long term, the more affordable it is for everyone, and more additional uh, private resources are, of course, channeled into our health system. Now, I mean, Labor has form on this, of course. I mean, we, we, we've seen uh, during the, uh, Keating, the whole Keating years, private health insurance membership plummeted from 63% down to about 30% before uh, the Howard government was able to turn things around. But before the last election, they said, we've learned. We're not going to make that mistake again. We, we've, learned, we've learned our lesson. We, um, will know, we, we now support private health insurance. We will not make any changes uh, to the private health insurance framework. And as uh, Senator Cory Bernardi said, the Australian people have been deceived. The Australian people have been deceived uh, by this government. And in fact, uh, the Prime Minister, as leader of the opposition, wrote uh, to the Australian Health Insurance Association uh, on the 20th of November, uh, a couple of days before the election, and no doubt because he thought it was politically important for him to do so. And he said, both my Shadow Minister for Health, Nicola Roxon, and I have made clear on many occasions this year that federal labour is committed to retaining the existing private health insurance rebates including the 30% general rebate and the 35 and 40% rebates for older Australians, etc., etc. Now, after the election, and this, is, this, is quite, this just shows how dishonest this government is with the Australian people. This just shows how dishonest this government is with the Australian people. On the 24th of February this year, 
Uh, the Health Minister was confronted with some media inquiries by the IH, uh, asking, what are you doing? Are there some plans afoot within government about changing uh, the private health insurance rebate? And this is what the Minister for Health and Ageing said on the 24th of February. The government is firmly committed to retaining the existing private health insurance rebates. So everybody is reassured. Everybody out there is reassured. What do we find out in estimates a couple of uh, months later? On the 12th of January 2009, the Health Minister was getting advice from her department. On the 12th of January 2009, the Minister for Health and Hygiene was getting advice from her department on how to reduce or scrub the rebate while she was out there a month and a half later telling the Australian people, all is fine, we remain committed. There's not going to be any change. This is how this government treats the Australian people, and they're pursuing bad policy. They're doing it behind closed doors. They're making commitments before the election. They're reaffirming them after the election, while all the while, all the while, uh, making, making disastrous uh, policy changes uh, for, for our health system. And, uh, Mr. President, I might continue after no, questions. Sure. Senator Cormann, you, you keep going. Um. See, I can see that people on the other side are really interested in my contribution to this debate. So I, 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 will, keep on, I will keep on going. I will, I will keep on going. Now, <laughs> Order. now, now Senator, Senator Evans might like to hear that as a direct result of this broken promise, as a direct result of this broken promise, uh, the cost of private health insurance will go up by up to 66.7% immediately, up by up to 66.7% as a direct result of this broken promise. Now, why, why is that, why is that uh, good uh, public policy on health? I would ask uh, the question. Now, the government says, the government says about 40,000 people will uh, leave private health insurance as a result of this measure. There's debate on this, but let's just take, let's just take their word for it. Uh, let's say it's 40,000 people that will leave uh, private health insurance as a result of this, of this measure. What does this mean? for um, our public hospitals. Well, it means that there's more people who will present at public hospitals that are already under pressure. pressure. And of course, we still have the flow-on consequences of last year's measure. Now, I, I sort of asked some questions during the inquiry. Well, how do you come up with this figure which the Minister has mentioned of 8,000 additional public hospital episodes? 8,000 additional public <laughs> hospital episodes. So I was told, well, 35% of the 25,000 people who will drop uh, private hospital insurance. So about 35 per cent, that's 8,750 uh, additional admissions, presumably. So, I mean, the minister's not very good at her maths. I mean, she won't ever make it to be the treasurer. She might be the Senator propaganda Cormann, minister for treasury, Senator but she Cormann, will never make it to be the it, treasurer. It being 2 p.m. Order.